My name is Angie Bellinger. I was born and raised in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm as what a lot of people refer to as a one woman show. I do all of my cooking, I do all of my shopping, but I never thought I'd make restaurant my lifelong work. I was living in Ohio. When my mom called, she said, oh, I'm opening a restaurant, I want you to come over and run it. The name is Workman's Cafe, to feed the working man. We went over the menu before we opened. Okay, okay, this is good, this is good. No, we can't do that. But when we opened, she just threw it, threw me in here. It's on you, you do what you want. I do recall her saying she had a restaurant um, right around the corner from where we lived in down our first house in downtown, serving basically the same type of meal that I serve, lima beans and rice and fried chicken. She had another business in the 70s and we sold what you would find in your convenience stores today. I learned how to cook using uh, freehand pouring from my mother. She said the more you do it, the more you'll get used to it and you could feel when it's right. It wasn't a measuring cup. Sometimes she would use a coffee cup and she would say, okay, that's enough. And now she said, okay, get me the milk. And we would always pour the milk from the gallon jug, never into a cup. Her biscuits came out the same way every time, light, fluffy, and very sweet. So I learned that from her. I learned free measuring with her. One day my lima beans would be too thick, and then another day it would be, wouldn't be thick enough. So my mom said, on a day when it was watery, she said, listen, I'm gonna have to cook your lima beans for you until you get the lima beans right because you, you just can't be serving just any old thing when it comes to lima beans. Every, anybody that loves lima beans, they know how it should be. So she cooked it for me for a week or so. My first time cooking it after that. And she said, okay, let me try lima beans. And I gave her a bowl of beans and she said, girl, I never thought I'd say this, but your lima beans is better than mine. Oh man, that made my day. Customers usually start coming in at about between 11.30 and 12. You will see construction trucks in my yard. You will see um, pickup trucks hauling lawn equipment. You will sometimes see uh, trucks from the uh, utility company, from the light company, the water company. Uh, my day is just, as they come in, I just, they keep me going. I'm hopping and bouncing. And, and like one customer said, she said, I don't know how you do it, but you get them served and, and you get them served and seated quickly. I said, that's my number one goal. The workman's platter, two pieces of chicken, a pork chop, cornbread, three sides. So you have a family of three that they're on a tight budget, but they want to treat themselves. So, you know, for less than $15, you're feeding three people for less than five bucks a piece. I have quite a few customers that come every day. The customer that was here, Nikki is her name. She doesn't have time to cook. The other day she told me she didn't get off from work until like three in the morning. She'll sit here until it's time for her to go to work. And she told me one day, she said, I come here and I hang out here because it's quiet here. And I see you as my big sister. You know, I can talk to you. I want the customers to feel like somebody cares for, cares about them. Not only do I appreciate your business, but I want you to know that somebody else cares. When my mom and I opened Workman's Cafe, she said, you've got to cook like you love what you're doing. You've got to cook with passion. And so that's what I did. I mean, I thought I, doing, I was doing it all along, but the more I got into it, the more I realized my passion for it was coming out. I, all I can say is Workman's has no intentions of changing. I'll put it that way.
we're doing is taking the ideas from the past and from around the world and kind of congeal it, just like what Hawaii is. Just bring it all together in this stew of wonderful ideas.